Welcome back. This is Disco Elysium part 11. Uh, today's objective is to mainly find money <laughs> if we want somewhere to sleep for the night. And yeah, try and pick off some of the quests that we have. Now we have a map at least, but the map wasn't as helpful as I thought. It doesn't tell me where the... where the objective is, so it's... I mean... It helps a little, but not that much. So yeah, we have to read through some quests and try and find some money. Why? Is this a new sign? Specifically towards me or what? I just want to check if I can talk to this big guy or will he kill me right away? I hope he doesn't kill me. <laughs> betrays your degeneracy that was an insult yeah measurehead his body totally betrays his degeneracy okay more insults You have succumbed to Al-Ghul. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Al-Ghul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Yes, Al-Ghul. He means alcohol. I doubt it, my microcephalic race servant. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Am sandwich race is waning. Begging for help. Attempting to pass fear for cooperation. How far the Occidental Aplo Group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. I mean, <laughs> I just don't want to die here. <laughs> You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. You dominated lesser cultures like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. I wish I had my gun. <laughs> Just end this fast and get through. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby, yeah. You know it. There is a button right behind him just out of reach. It must be the one that opens the door to the harbor.
Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Ghul, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art, and your microcephalic skulls. Yeah, I mean, I won't <laughs> succeed with this one. I don't know what this will help to... I mean... Ask what kind of races there are first. Classification is core to this stuff. There are three categories of race. Tip A, the heroic races. Tibet, the servile races, and the vile CF race cauldron of pederasty. Which one do you need education on? Those are the Simonese, the Areopagit, and the Occidentals, excluding the Maun, of course. The Maun are riddled with eczema to the point where they find it impossible to smile. They are all lactose intolerant, a common result of inbreeding. A receding genetic pool has led the Mound on reprehensible street parades. In Mound cities like Stats Canal and Vredefort, wearing wooden clogs on their feet and little green tassels on their hats. You know them by the names of their nation-states. The Oranese, the Gotwaldians, and the Königsteiners. My people simply call them Mao. Mahun is a derogative term for first world people of Gotwaldian descent. They do not all have eczema. Also, people of Katla, like the Sudu and the Uhu, are much more lactose intolerant. In some municipalities of Moranier, people do wear shoes made of wood to street parades. Green, orange, and even yellow tassels have also been seen on hats. The mound are proof that you can have too much occidental racial purity and tassel-centric culture. Inbreathing has led to a lactose intolerant subrace whom no one can take seriously. Colorful tassels are, let's be honest, not a good sartorial choice for this century. You might want to avoid wooden clogs too. The Vespertines and Messinians of Vesper and Messina. The ancient Meteorans of Meteo by the Golden Pisantic Sea. The Suren of Sur La Clé, and even the North Königsteiners. All have Tip A race propensities. The other large Mondial Civilization, the Mesk, are too yellow and oleaginous to count as a heroic race. True, they are violent and expansionist. But they have a glandular problem. Overproduction of sebum. Sebum is leaking into their brains, making them listen to el mariachi music and eat toxic minced meat based food, which in turn only produces more sebum. As proven by the Maun and the Mesk, Occidental Tip A is in retrograde. The Seminese and the Areopagit are on the ascent. I don't know what I'm doing here. It's so boring. <laughs> the indigenous people of this, the Insulindian archipelago. The Seminese inhabit the southern islands. 
I am Zimnis from the stock of Ulubuir on Ile de Fontaine. The Areopagites are the master race of the Ilmaran deserts. The Zimnis are descendants of the Areopagites. We came here during a heroic migration from Ilmara to Ansuland. The Areopagites are sleek, long headed. The Zimnis are powerful, mesomorphic. The former is an immutable progenitor, unchanged since the Super Isola of Pericarnassus. Ancient brains rest in their slender skulls. The latter is perfected and adapting. Together they form the Simeno Areopagite, or Simeopagite Super Race. That is all. There are no more. Nature was not capable of more. Tipe B are the unheroic races. Amorphous non competitor. The Koikos of Grad, Yugo, Zimsk, Chest et al. are what you would call white officer in a suspect description. Yes. To an untrained eye, the Koiko appear white and pinkish, like a hand on the witch. But look into their eyes and you will see. They are of an indistinct color, and pinkness is a racial quality that has to be earned through centuries of advanced ballistic warfare and cultural domination that the Grad people have undergone for drinking all rule and smoke. The Koiko, the countless micronationalists, the Revacholians, halfway between. Is it 82,000 oh, years bothered. that we've been recording history? You have very little idea of what is happening, but that seems a little off. The revolution came to Ravachol from Grad. The revolution is fatal enough of Tibet mediocre. Tips, the F, are a museum of failed chimeric experiments and tragic maladap. It would be cruel. To entertain ourselves, you understand nothing. To solve the great race enigma, you have to first ask yourself, what is the race enigma? You have not even worded the mystery, let alone solved it. We will see. You need to internalize what you have heard here today, then return to me. This clarity does not come instantly. I cannot possibly imagine what else we have to discuss, Tibere Vasholian. Your love for disco music and venereal disease? to waste a talent point on this and I don't have one. But we need to do a quick quest or something to level up. Please. An old monument. Nope, we've seen that one.
taken and see if we can figure out a simple quest maybe. This one we need to get inside the harbor, so not possible like that. No, this one is harbor. And what is this? Yeah, but he owns the harbor, I'm guessing he's in the harbor. Around here somewhere, but where's here? I don't remember where I found this quest. Do this one. Okay, Kim's not here. Kim's not here again. We can ask Kuno stuff again. Let's see how that goes. Usually doesn't give me very much info. Except for insults. So you tried to kill Kuno's gale? What's up with that? You wanna talk about it? No one's moving anywhere. Do this shit again, and Kuno's gonna climb in your room at night with a knife. I don't have a room, Kuno. I'm a, fi I'm a bum now. I need money. Kuno knows where you sleep. The pig who fucked his window up. I'm gonna climb in through that balcony. Put the fucking knife in you. Yeah. I've been in your room. <laughs> yeah. Did you like what you saw? But you and Kuno are good for now. Pals, shoot that shit at Kuno. Let's have a jolly time. The determination in his voice leaves little room for doubt in his sincerity. And you're back in business with the Kuno. Now what is it? The fuck about it? Kuno doesn't give a shit about the armor. That fucking had one thing majorly wrong with him. He's a fucking mutant. Do you remember how he looked? Fucking growth hormone shit. He's a giant. The armor's too big for any man. Kuno doesn't give a shit about that freak armor. Kuno threw that shit away. Kuno tried to get the helmet on. It was too big. Kuno kicked that shit in the sea, rugby style. That shit means nothing to Kuno. Yeah, that shit means nothing to Kuno. Kuno doesn't give a shit about material shit. Kuno's a fucking monk. You wanna fuck on someone about that armor? Go fuck the mustached union fuck. The jolly troubadour shit at the gate. Yeah, cocking boot. You know that jolly union cow fucker came around talking about cows or some shit? Came around pretending like he cares about cows? <laughs> what is he talking about? Yes, you met him at the gates. The one with the boots and the jolly smile. Ooh, who's that? I don't remember. Manana. Uh, who's that? It's not the big guy, right? Yeah, he's the one you want to talk to. He's fucking crazy about that armor shit. Coming here pretending like he likes cows. Trying to catch a peep at Kuno's armor. Curious, my liege. Why did Kuno feed you this information? Y 
Yeah, Kuno's doing charity today. Kuno Day. Kuno feels sorry for you, loser pig. Kuno's doing pity now. Still, seems suspicious. He may have it in for that guy. Or you may be paranoid. That is also a possibility, sire. Fuck are you talking about? What is this contusion shit? He says you're stupid, Kuno. They want to make you stupid again. Words of fucking shit make you stupid. <laughs> Kuno's got his own words now. Kuno words. Has Kuno been to some kind of school? Probably a school for children with behavioural difficulties. Watch out, Kuno. He's trying to relate to Fuck. you. <laughs> Smart one. <laughs> Kuno doesn't give a shit about your handicap. Get a wheelchair or something. Kuno doesn't care. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost, f Kuno doesn't fucking... Everyone is insulting me. Why? I mean, look at this. I'm dressed to impress here. Okay, who's this mask man? Big guy or the small guy? I'm guessing the big guy sends this big armor. He wants it. <laughs> right to work! Right to work! Shame on you! Not before you get in there and get your ass whooped. Learn by failure, I always say. Yeah, thank. He might have some advice, but you've got to at least try to fight measure head first. Return if you fail. I mean, I will die. Who's this guy with the boots that I'm supposed to find? He has good song. Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? <laughs> the little boy had the good on his promise. To get me into trouble. To sick the pigs on me. Pardon the choice of words. Not mine. I was asked to look into that armor situation. Official union probe, you know. Track it down, see who took it. At first I thought, why not? Maybe the pieces can feed the strike. Buy us a few more days under the sun, you know? So I went to this boy. He said he'll make me his prison bitch. He's got eyes everywhere, and the cops in his pocket, and he's the king of jam rock. Serves me right for doing menial footwork. I dropped that probe right then and there, and it still got me into trouble. One bad move is all it takes. I learned that people don't want to talk to a drunk union man about some armor. Not much. Technical stuff, mostly. That would... I did some research into this armadura. Let's say I have friends at the library. I didn't get into the material science, just how it comes off. In parts. Four in total. The helmet was the first to go. The kid says he tore it off and kicked it into the sea. I believe him. The boots were still on the guy last I saw. Too hard to remove. So, as I count, there are two parts missing. The gauntlets and the cuirass. This is where I left off. Too much hassle. More like a job for some militia. I guess you won't be collecting them all then. That's less work for you at least. Oh, they're just gone. They don't exist anymore, if they ever did at all. Forget about them. I did. Smart choice. It's only that one spot you need armor to. 
the one the bullet hits. Good luck if you go for those boots though. You'd have an easier time resting the spurs off a boyadero than getting them off him. It's a minor nuisance. It's all good. He thinks, not yet. Better to get this business out of the way. Sweeter then. No problem. If you see that kid, thank him from Call Me Manana. Thank him for showing me the way. But the body's gone. I can't do this one anymore. So that's gone. Uh, I don't know what to do. I mean, the helmet is my only choice, I guess. What did he say about the chest piece? I can't remember. This is very little information. I mean, the leggings, no one knows. The chest piece can't really remember what he said, who took it, and the helmet is in the sea. Vigilance officer, what can this all carry? Officer! The mere sight of police in Martinez makes me feel safer already. A sturdy metal door guards the southwest entrance. This could be a way into the apartment building the smoking man vanished into. The door rattles against your knuckles, but there's no response. The door rattles again, but this time you hear an elderly woman's voice calling out from inside. Stop banging on the door. I'm not letting any more strangers inside. <laughs> the police. Everyone knows the police don't come round here. No, I already told you, I won't go check the backyard door. Maybe someone there will. Backyard door? With the smoker? Good. We had enough problems with bums and drunks and thieves loitering in the hall. You're well versed in the kind of threatening legalese that implies criminal liability, but in fact has no meaning whatsoever. I know my rights, and don't you mom me, boy. Insufficiently differential. Hold your horses. <coughs> I'm 
I don't care about your stinking badge. Just come in. walking. Give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> now, what do you want from me, policeman? I don't look much of a, like a policeman. <laughs> She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residents. Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil. Right? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? Talk? <laughs> he lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's... I'm no one. Just an old woman who cleans these... If you can call it living. I have a little room upstairs right next to the coal room. It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain. What happened here? It will still be accessible through the apartment next to it. That one didn't have a door. Sadly, nothing of great value remains here. Indeed. <laughs> Yes. The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. Okay. Is everyone a poet in this town or what? I'm Cindy the fucking skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type. The last time I was tested for Hep C. Had a battery of tests just last week. <laughs> I was I'm sarcastic, man. I'm practically of interesting critters. Kinda like a man o war. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. The lieutenant furrows his brow at another one of your eccentricisms.
They're gonna ruin your boat, man. You better leave. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her steering. That is on her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Okay. Ozon is an archipelago, two days travel away from Rivershaw. Its moneyed residents used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques, rarely have reason to visit Martinez. Isn't it part of your job to know all the illustrious personages round this shithole? She's the Wild Pines representative. Madam, professional, negotiator in the flesh, and the flimsy linen. I need to talk to her then. The Wild Pines representative. How do I get there? Something morbid about old ladies trying to look young. That's rich coming from a young girl dressed up like a granny. Oh, but that's the way it should be. The natural order of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. Looks like shit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. Yeah? I'm like uh, Sean Penn from the movie Colors. I'm the good cop that everyone likes. Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? This shit is pumped out of government vehicles. Something to think about next time you're driving around in your pretty little piggy carriage. I don't have a car. I don't know how I came here. <laughs> I ain't no snitch, pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No, what do I care about some fucking tin eggshells? Ugh, all right. Sad piggy. I'll give you this one. I saw a little girl in the fishing village running around with military grade handwear. Look cute as hell. Where is the fishing village? Have I been there? Let's check the map after this. If you haven't been there, the village is a shithole down the coast from the main plaza. Have a good time. Piggy, I have no idea. Watch your back. Yeah, you got lots of stuff to do now. Uh, we need to talk to the boat lady. We need to find the fishing village. And I want to inspect everything in this building. Maybe there's money. And find the smoking guy, of course. Gold. More gold. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging. The walking stops abruptly, but no you can feel tension on the other side. A poor communard. Do I have to open the door? Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Chillax. It's generally easier to do things if you have literally any reason. I don't. I just want money. Easy money. This door has been closed with a padlock. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cut. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. Uh. 
This door has been closed with a padlock. What are you doing? Yes. You're Such trying to cut great, the body of the great. lock with the chain cutters, and it's really not working. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in other words. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted oh by Mezov and the communists during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers read to symbolize the toppling of the old order. Also, some social democrats were already using the wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It was about building a society that could exist in accord with the natural world. And at the same time, because white is the color of peace. Nothing at all yet. Right now, it's just meaningless. That looks even cooler. kind of thought is that I will go back to the first balcony, check the upper floor from there first, and then come back here. It needs to be order in the actions. <laughs> it was shoes. Why do I get money? Take the shoes instead. You can sell them. This doesn't just take me back to the same place. <laughs> it's the old lady's place, right? Oh uh, yeah, maybe simply not. Jackpot. Oh, 
uh, I thought was shorts. The pockets of these new jeans are perfect for sticking your hand into. Makes you look cool, calm and collected. As your hand enters the pocket, your fingers brush against something. Soft, Piece of paper. yet crinkly. Hey, it's a chewing gum wrapper. Nice. It reminds you of the fruity juice of apricots. You should inspect it closer if you have time. Something about the wrapper's texture is familiar. By the way, the raw materials were most likely exported from Seagai, the apricot suzerainty, and processed in Sir Clay into the apricot-flavored chewing gum so happy I loved by kids of today and yesterday. A crinkled chewing gum wrapper. The worn label reads, Tutti Frutti. It smells faintly of apricots with a barely noticeable twinge of cinnamon. You feel compelled to point out that there's nothing fruity about cinnamon. It's a spice derived from tree bark. Can a used wrapper shrug? Seems like that's what the wrapper is doing somehow. This is not about flowers or bark. What is this about? Why are you looking at this wrapper? Good question. There is no answer or secret phrase written on the inside of the wrapper. Yet drawn by regret. Stop before you hurt yourself with a tutti frutti wrapper. Throw it away. You carefully fold the wrapper into a square before putting it back into your pocket, lovingly even. It's just a racist mug. No. What's uh -huh. there to read? A crinkled chewing gum. You feel c You carefully. I thought I could spin it around and look at it. Oof, this was a lot. I just took your money. Bye. Am I missing stuff or are new stuff appearing every time I walk in? This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. So, number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said no one answers. Looks like he isn't home. You should come back later. After 21, no one answers. Looks like he isn't. Okay, let's see if we can reach the boat lady <laughs> and then we'll end it for this time.
Okay, we got out here. Nice. striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat. Good morning, officer. I'm Joyce. Joyce El Messia. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You must be from the RCM. Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. <laughs> Relax. She meant it in jest. I'm glad to see you here. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will, gladly. What we do? I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It's a giant undertaking. The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See the- And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration, offshore platform. The Wild Pines Group is one of the original Revisholian Indo tribes, companies awarded royal monopolies by the king, the suzerain himself, centuries ago. The king is long gone, but several of the Indo tribes remain. Son Baptiste, L-U-M, an unknown entity known as brightest. Why, thank you. I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year, can the I company have booked some? more than Please. 20 billion real in Give revenue. Me a bribe. Eight billion? 20 billion is a large number, but the conglomerate employs 72,000 people. They all need to be paid. Then there are capital improvements, interest pay a conglomerate the size of the wild pines is like a shark if it stops moving it will die then what becomes of those 72,000 families it's a tremendous responsibility they started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the samaran and in centuries of care deliberation and madness have gone into this endeavor you know more than you let on Certainly it helped, but most of the original Indo tribes have failed, or been absorbed. To survive, Wild Pines had to grow and adapt. No suzerain did that. You mean aside from being the Terminal's legal owners? Who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo? There are no minor cogs in the system. Each terminal must be accounted for, lest the entire system break. Every hiccup in such a system means thousands lose their- With your help, hopefully, says her warm tone. Everything, right up to, but not including, trade secrets. Okay. I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the Union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines' counteroffer. They're not. That's the problem. The Union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Wait. She just admitted that the lynching and the strike are connected. Hmm. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a two meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the- I wasn't the original negotiator here. 
I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he'd granted the union in prior negotiations. The union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more, I guess you could say, aggressive. Mr. Clare told him to, how did he put it? Fuck off, midget. Gaumont is short of stature, you see. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before, and who was more than fair with him and the union. There are leaflets everywhere, and banners. What do they say again? Oh yes, every worker, a member of the board. Most of the workers probably don't know what that means. In its defense, another said, demand democracy. Pretty tame stuff compared to every worker, a member of the board. Fortunately, they explained it. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about anything, it needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers yeah, in its Martinez luck. terminal. <laughs> Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines, essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines Group. I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position, a hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up, just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. And now, people are getting lynched, I hear. Behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. The scabs? You mean the huddled masses of Jamrock come to plead for work where the Union refuses? Don't let her answer it herself. Ah. Uh. <laughs> if these strike breakers were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. Not yet, at least. Okay, I take that as a yes. It's implied. She's open to discussing this matter with you at a later occasion. Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. Of course not. Everard <laughs> is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Yes, Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does, and when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. The Daybarders Union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act. But they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The Brothers Clare came and transformed it into a... How do you say... Thank you for being candid. Sadly, Wild Pines have cooperated with what amounts to a crime syndicate for two decades. However much you feed the wolf, the wolf always hungers. I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the Union. She disappeared. Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore. Or coming to work. Ever. End of story. Someone scared her. This forewoman, her name? Sadly, the company records do not even give a name. She's just forewoman in private correspondence, Holly. 
I don't even know if it's a sir or given name. And I don't have access to the Union's file. Indeed. The company suspects foul play. But there's nothing they could do. It was a Union matter. The point of the presentation is, these kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out when you're dealing with him. Of course. How else can I help? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your name and badge number. What happened to it, Detective? <laughs> I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? I can't hear you, darling. Speak up, please. Oh, dear. Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. I don't even know how to respond. Money. Give me money. I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. However, this isn't about my feelings. There's also protocol to consider. I'm afraid Ugh. I can't say any more until I've seen that badge. Hang on. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. She's a negotiator. Just float a favor at her. Insinuate. I will be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something very tangible. You're in, but expect her to drive a hard bargain. Reports from inside Terminal B suggest it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinez. The Union controls the terminal, so it goes to reason. They're profiting from this trade. The company has tried looking into this matter before, to no avail. Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones. Or, you can recover your badge. Though, if I may be blunt with you, it sounds like that may be a lost cause. It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol, with the Union's blessing. Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. Yes, but you won't get anything out of Evrat and the Dock Workers Union. Still, every chain has its weak link. The handoff. The motor lorries at the roundabout. Precisely. Someone needs to move the ingredients from the harbor into the city. Once they... How convenient that they're stranded like beached whales at that roundabout. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. Uncovering Union secrets could also give you an upper hand when dealing with them. I really need to go, but this conversation is going forever. <laughs> I hope this doesn't cancel the conversation. But we'll try. Let's end it for today and we'll be back and continue this next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.